Well, I used to write for the NME at the offices behind me in Carnaby Street. Music and politics really mattered. But now in this sort of era of pop idol, it's like writing about toothpaste. You get these quite militant UK acts like Estelle, Baby Shambles, Asian Dove Foundation, Kano, doing campaigns like Love Music, Hate Racism. But the NME has turned into smash hits. When Tony Parsons and Julie Birchall from the NME talked about, um, compared to the Tom Robinson band, every other musician was wanking in the wind, they were laughed at. It was seen as ridiculous because he was viewed very much as a public school phony. And even though musically um, I preferred The Clash, that man was a real education to like, a comprehensive kid like me. He was talking about issues I knew nothing about, homophobia, racism, sexism, and standing up for things like socialism and trade union rights. As a budding NME writer, I used to go to festivals see bands like Steel Pulse play uh, Ku Klux Klan or the specials talk about Ghost Town. And it was like an act of insurrection to me and it inspired my band, the Anti-Social Workers, and our producer, the Mad Professor. And lots of NME writers turned artists like the Redskins, uh, Attila the Stockbroker, Stephen Wells, Mars, to try and change hearts and minds in a very small way through music and the spoken word. The writers really had the courage of their convictions. I mean, the enemies, Tony Parsons and Julie Birchall, fought on the streets of Lewisham against the fascists. I mean, Exmoor went on the Right to Work march and wrote a big feature about it in the NME. <laughs> Nowadays, the enemy writers would be more interested in what colour Lyle and Scott jumper they've got to wear at the awards ceremony. The enemy used to have a huge circulation and a massive cultural clout under the editorship of, of the mighty Neil Spencer. Wonderful writers like Robert Elms, Parsons, Birchall, Danny Baker, Paolo Hewitt, Stephen Wells, these are all inspiring, stirring, moral writers, articulate people, you know, whose wit could open an oyster at 60 paces. Music was very much underground, and we were like a secret society of mavericks. Um, it was street smart and delicious, and to many, it was the best job in the world.